want you close Maybe hold your hand a little while Somehow I know You're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own We ride around in style Sleeves rolled up, glasses on And then you make that smile And my heart starts racing When I'm with you YouTube, Steve-O Trucker here, welcome back to my channel, I'm sorry for any delay of content of late, I've just been really busy, I'm not going to go any more about that, and today's focus of today's video is something I witnessed today, or what happened to me in a way, don't worry, it's nothing real bad really, nothing, no harm really done, just being delayed and all that, but it's just I'll go through a situation. Hopefully I'll get the footage off from dashcam, and this is the plan that I'll get hopefully that'll be put up imminently. Footage I'll be using primarily in the background will be probably of me driving somewhere else than what I'm speaking about now. If that makes any sense. I'm just getting really complicated now, isn't it? So never that that aside, hopefully it should be a quite interesting video as well. So what happened today? I don't know, I think I need to probably talk you through the situation first, then we can talk about it, because it's kind of a very ignorant kind of situation caused by another truck driver. And uh, this was going into Mulba, I missed my turn going into Mulba, so I went and decided to go into the back way to go through Mulba, which I've done before, so I know you can get through this, you need to be a bit cautious, because it is a little bit tight in a way. Um, has its narrow sections, but it's okay, it's all legal, no restrictions or anything like that to go through. So I went down there, on the bend as you're sort of approaching the sort of centre, market centre bit, you got like a sharp white turn, which I need a full turn to get around. And uh, there was a, uh, well I saw this, I was coming down the hill, you know, I was like, oh there's a truck offloading on the bend, like a refrigerated white truck delivering obviously probably food and all that which is fair enough he's on double air lines on the blind bend which I open me personally if I was driving that I would have probably parked up more near where I ended up stopping which you'll hopefully see on the video either playing now or whenever or after this I then because I realized what's going on there's no point in me going asking what's going on because you can see what's going on and I've done food deliveries before in the past, so I know what, you know, it, it's not an easy bit of job to do, really. You know, it's, it is kind, it, 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 it's not an easy job. So I did appreciate that, I was patient, I just waited there for, I think it was about 20, maybe 20 plus minutes I waited. They looked like they were done. So I saw the driver, or I think it was the driver's mate, showing them out doors up and driving got back into his cab you know before this he had been about there's two of them there's a driver's mate and the driver who was in high vis i thought i'll give him up five ten minutes they might be finishing off some paperwork or something planning in the next next point they need to go to which is fair enough so i thought it'd be reasonable five ten minutes i left it out but i think it was about ten minutes i left it till then no budge, you know, I had a suspicion what they were up to. I suspected at that stage they were on break, but there could be a lot of reasons they could have broken down, you know. So I thought, I'll have a walk down. I'll have a walk down and check out. I don't think you have seen me walk down, because uh, my dash cam may have turned off by then. But nevertheless, when that nav did turn off, I did walk down to go and ask the driver see how long he may be. Sorry about this guys, just getting through a village. So I'm just uh do 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 yeah so I thought I'd walk down and uh you know go go and see what the score see how long they'll be you know, so i'm being polite it's so i knocked on the driver's side door just gain his attention because he was a bit focused on his mate 
and uh, opened his window and I, I just politely asked, you know, sorry about this, I'm just truck driver there, how long are you going to be, you know, because I, I need the space you're in to get around this bend. And then, what did he say? He said, oh, I can't move at the moment because I'm on brake. You know, in a very, very, I, I don't want to try and put on a voice for it, but in a very combative voice and manner. You know, so he was very grumpy about it and very angry towards me in the manner of how he was speaking to me. But I said, look, you know, because now it confirmed he was on bike. At least he's being honest. I'll grunt him that. At least he's being honest. See, if he uh, just said, look, I'm finishing off some paper, it will be off in a few minutes, by the time your backup truck will be gone, I wouldn't have known much better, really. I would have probably still predicted. But, you know, we had a little bit of discussion, which uh, I basically sort of highlighted. Look, you know, it is illegal to have a break. I did highlight at the beginning of when I highlighted this that I have no qualms that you had to make your delivery. I have no qualms with that. I have no qualms that you make your delivery here at all. But having a break on that as well, that's highly illegal. You know, because you're on the blind bend, W Airlines. I and this is a bit of guesswork. I don't. I do not know. I can't confirm if they're on break or not. Well, they're working. They may have been. So that would have been illegal as well if that was the case. But nevertheless, that aside, you know, what they were doing, you know, in, in effect, hindering myself being able to go go down the road. And I don't mind it, as I said, if they're making a delivery. But if they're on break, then I take offence. I'm like, hang on, how selfish do you have to be? You know, I've got to get to customers. I've got to, uh, you know, go go and have breaks somewhere, but where it's safe and legal to do so. And that was not a safe or legal place to do it, on the blind bed. You know, let alone in hindering fellow truckers, you know, alone. Other traffic could flow through, so, you know, it is what it was, but it was very frustrating and told to it delay me for around 45 minutes plus, wherever it may be. And bear in mind the time was sort of gone on by the time I got parked up and put my hazards on while I was waiting on my taco, so it's probably been a bit longer than I have said. So, you know, we had discussion. I said, look, I could easily handle, I highlighted, it is on my dash cam this, it will show how long you've been sat here for, you know, and you finishing up and how long that's taken. Which he kind of, not altered his tone, but it was kind of like saying, Oh, you should be down here. And I said, there's no restrictions, no thing saying, and no less that you shouldn't be down here. But, you know, it's a free country. There's no restrictions down here for us. I know I can get down here, and I'm sure you know you can get down here as well. Then he changed his tone, saying, oh, I can have my Blake then, can't I? Hello? No, you're on the airlines on a blind bend. You know, on narrow roads in a town. You know, having a full break there, and the fact that you're delaying somebody without actually doing anything either. Mental, you know, it is utterly mental. Turn right. But, uh, yeah, so I walked back up to the truck. So he said, look, I'll, by the time you get back up to your truck, I'll be off. And more or less he was. I mean, he did sort of hang around for a few, for a minute or two extra, I suspect, out of there, uh, to try and wind me up, I suspect. Because I did highlight to him that I could easily, A, phone up the police, and B, I could also hand the footage over and report you to your company. And this is how I sort of ended it. I sort of said, I may report you to the company, which I'm probably not. You know, but I thought I'd throw the threat out there just to give him a bit of a boot to go, ooh, actually, and that may have been what sunk it for him. Oh, actually, if he does have a dash cam, we'll have my company, because it was all this wagon's logoed, so there's no way he can't track down this company. 
and that's why on this video I will try to cover up his identity and the company's logoing as best as possible. So I'm not after any grief to be put towards his company, ideally, from this video. This is just more of a chat-based video to talk about, you know, being polite, courteous amongst professional drivers. And just to talk about the ego, what was going on there, in terms of, you know, you've had the drivers be really patient. You are now taking the mech, only now sitting on brake, well knowing that you've got a heavy goods vehicle waiting to come down that's been on the hazards, lights on, engine running for the time you've been there to make the point clearer. You know, I parked a little bit up the hill from him to allow basically cars to get around me safely and oncoming cars to see up through the danger as well and also to give any cars that overtake me any some time to get back in if anything came around the blind blind bend you know so people basically had time to react or act before having to react <laughs> should I say or whichever so I'm getting muddled with my words but yeah as I'm saying I found this situation quite frustrating at the time but in some ways quite sadly amusing after you know going you know I know the vast majority of truck drivers are really good at what they do the professional are considerate to others let alone to other truck drivers as well because they know the struggles we each go through that's why I was patient initially with that truck driver I was making his delivery I've done that work before I know what it's like I'm quite willing to wait for delivery to be made but not for somebody then to complete a break at the end of it for a considerable amount of time extra. I'm willing to give five to ten minutes after delivery is made to finish up any paperwork, program your sat nav where you need to go, put your makeup on and disappear. But anything more than that really, unless if you've broken down or some sort of pretty good legitimate excuse comes out there's not really any excuse except from you know as I said primarily if you've broken down or you wait for a customer to come out with a sheet of paper or something like that but even then there was nothing to stop him because he knew I was up I could see he could see that was there from him going actually to his driver's mate get a few boxes off take that down I'll drive around the block and allow this other truck through but, and this is why I suspect he may have been on brake while I was waiting. Due, you know, that obviously he didn't want to move, otherwise it'll knock him off brake. <laughs> and now I want to chat, because I know some people may comment up and say, well, he might be tight up on time. There's no excuse. I mean, even if if in the case of one of the theories I had is that he must have got to the customer because Ivy has had a strict time scheduled to be there which you could argue is a fair enough one but equally you run out of drive time at that time or working time but if working time drive time is in the question you should take a break beforehand you know realistically you know certainly if you know you're going to be affecting traffic and the flow of traffic you know, any responsible driver will, you know, will account for that and be considerate of it. And maybe you never have a backup plan, you know. And worst case, if you're going to be late to the customer, you can always phone your dispatch up. Or sometimes if you're lucky enough to have the phone number for the customer and say, look, you know, I'm going to be 45 minutes late because I've got to stop for a break. There's no way I can make it there, deliver, and have a break at your site. And that's it. And maybe when you phone them up, you might find out a different solution to your problem. Might like actually, there's a there's such and such nearby park in there, and you can wheel it from there. You know, you might be a solution to every little problem. You never know. But that aside, at least contacting the customer, let or your dispatch if you don't have. The ability of getting hold of the customer and just letting them know saying you know sorry I can't get in there deliver and have a break at that location and it's just having the confidence to do that 
you know, I understand, you know, they're poor day drivers and they want to get back and finish the the round early. I can sympathise that a little bit, you know, but it's no excuse for cutting corners in terms of that will affect other people. And certainly other professional drivers, you know. It's irritating because, you know, that delayed me for quite a long time. I say I don't mind the time that he was dipping and offloading. And bear in mind, he wasn't actually doing a huge amount. It was his, uh, it's his driver's mate who seemed to be doing all the legwork. And fair enough, there might be a reason for that. But that aside, you know, it is what it was. It is just a frustrating situation to have. And as you hopefully have seen through this, roughly what happened. You know, I know it doesn't show me where I've got out. I don't think it has. If it has, I probably may show you that as well. You know, but I will try to, where possible, try to edit out any bits and bobs, some blurring over the logo or something, which will be quite a good thing for me to do because I still need to learn how to do that. So this is actually quite a good video to practice on that. I don't mind saying where whereabouts it was in Mulba on the 13th. That's all I'll say. Thirteenth of February. February. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still <laughs> getting used to the month. <laughs> then I'm off to US next month, which is cool for a long weekend, which I can't wait for. But that aside, you know, I would love to hear your thoughts on on that situation. I've chatted to a few colleagues about the situation already. Some would have said they would have gone down a bit earlier, which fair enough. I can sympathise with. I, I was just told it not to the point. I said that's why I was trying to explain why I waited for a while because I could see what was going on. There's no point in me going down to give them grief. I'm well, not to give grief, but you know, to go. You know, how long you be? How long you be? You know. <laughs> Maybe yes, I could have found out then and maybe taken a bit of action on them, or just given them a bit of a boot, maybe. But that's hindsight at the end of the day. And maybe that's a lesson that I need to take out of it, is if that situation happens again, or situation obviously that hinders my progress, obviously a fellow professional taking the time off loading, is maybe just to politely go, now how, how long do you reckon, driver? You know, I appreciate your got a delivery, I'm not here to rush you. Let's go through some narrow sections at the moment, so if I'm a bit distracted, that's why. <laughs> so yeah, so, you know, there are, there are several things that I've seen and I can learn from in that scenario to take on to if I run into the same scenario again. But I'll still probably try to be calm about it and, you know, treat the situation with a bit of common sense where possible. You know, to go, now I have a bit of spinning, I know the pain of doing that, you know, I'll be patient and I'll wait. You know, you only hope because I know you see me. You can obviously see me, and there's no reason why a tanker will be doing business amongst some houses. Well, you never know, but <laughs> but it is what it is at the end of the day. And I say it only proves not all truck drivers are professionals in in the manner of there's a lot of police lurking about. Sorry about it, guys. I'm just seeing what's going on. Making sure there hasn't been something kicked off or something. I'm not running into something. Yeah, so. It's a difficult one. As I said, he was very combative, shall I say. Very rude in the blocks for me. Yeah, there was no call for it. You know, if you've got a fellow driver who's coming up being fair, you know, polite, neutral with you. Treat them with how you want to be treated. You know, obviously, if he comes down and starts swearing at you or go, you know, what the, you know, off the outset before he knows the big picture of things, you know, fair enough. But if he comes down and it's polite, he's only just seeking a question at the end of the day in terms of how long will you be, you know. As I tried to make clear, I wasn't there to bully him off off the point 
but just to say, look, you know, how long have you been? You know, I'm, you know, you've been here for a fair while. You've been sat in there. Yeah, I didn't say that, but that's the reason why I went down. But then for the driver to be combative against you. I know probably why as well. He probably took offence to it because he probably knew I was onto him. He knew he was in the wrong, which is probably certain. And some people, when they're in the wrong, they get angry. In some ways, it's fairly natural, you know, to feel a bit frustrated when you're in the wrong. Oh, I know, I've been in the wrong before, but I try to be the bigger man and go, yep, I messed up, you know, I owe up to that. Because it's not pleasant being found out or of knowing that you made a mistake, you know. But I'm not trying to defend him with saying that. But, you know, there's still no call, you know. There's a few ways he could have got out of that situation as I highlight in this, in the fact that, you know, he didn't have to say he was on bike. He said he was uh, on finishing some paperwork off or something like that. But I'm, you know, saying all those lines. You know, I'm not saying you should lie, but as I said, at least he had the honesty. At least that was something. There's the fact that, you know, as soon as you highlight the law against him, he came even more combative. And that's the only reason why I knew I was, I was hitting the nail there, you know that he knew what he was doing. And in some ways I probably should have phoned him. I don't like to report people if I can help it. You know, at the end of the day, we're all drivers, all try to do a job. I don't want anybody kicked out of the job. You know, I know he's probably on on his wage. You know, he could be having a bit of an off day. But at the same time, come on. No, he's probably very lucky it was me who stuck behind him. It was by another driver. <laughs> I may have wanted to see what I've got on, but you never know. <laughs> well, I don't want to speculate too much there, but uh, yeah, interesting stuff. And that's I'll I'll leave the rest down to yourselves. I'd love to hear your comments on the situation. What you think of it? How would you approach it? Would you have done something similar to me, you know, or would you have done something completely different, you know? By the way, I couldn't reverse up the hill, but it's been stupid because it would have been up effectively where you had to all park cars on one way street then. Well, not one way, but you know, on the other side of the road, which you know, it's just dangerous and it'll just cause a nightmare. My walk down to the truck, you notice there was. The left-hand turn just ahead of me did go back up to the main high street, but it would have been a very tight turn to make. Tighter than doing that right-hand turn at the bottom. And then I would have to make another right, tight right-hand turn to go down the hill, which would not be ideal, especially since I was fully laden as well. If I was empty, I may have considered that a bit more. But that aside, that's the only other, well, the only other solution was to turn that left turn, but I don't know if I would have made that left turn with a load on, and get moving way too tight, and I wasn't happy to make that, that risk. And as I said, on the way back, he was about to go anyway, so it would have made no difference either way, you know, the situation sort of resolved. But just irritating that, you know, you're there longer than you needed to be by a considerable amount of time. So I suppose some road works now, so I'm just going to have to obviously pay attention all the time, but, you know, be a bit more perceptive because you've got loads of cars coming through and you never know what some people may do. <laughs> Yeah, so as I say, I would love to hear what your thoughts are on it. Yards, you know, I mean, I open it, I'm quite a chill person as a whole. I don't like to cause trouble personally. I mean, trust me, if somebody does mess with me, I will protect myself, I will go down the lines and I won't hold any mercy on that front. But I am very tolerant to a certain degree, you know. But it only goes so far. I have my limits. When <laughs> I, 
and I've been told I'm way, I'm way, way too fair at the end of the day. I know I am. I know, you know, some people might. That's how I know what some of the answers may be. But I think there's no real right and wrong in what I did. It's kind of roll the dice. You know, there was, there's several different solutions that I could have done. I don't think any would have been lesser or more longer. There's not much I could have done either, really. So, yet again, I would love to hear from you what your thoughts are on this. You know, it would be quite interesting. Also, I would like to say a massive thank you to all my subscribers. You know, so I actually have had a bit of a surge, even though I haven't been very active as of late. I do apologise for the lack of activity on my channel for the last month or so. You know, some of it's because of personal reasons, kind of having a break as well. You know, come on, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got one of those uh, head-on overtakers. Expects everybody else to slam on to allow them to do the overtake. <laughs> Luckily, I saw it was coming, so I could gradually slow down just to allow them past. Yeah, it is what it is. That's another video for another day, probably. <laughs> to chat about that kind of scenario. But hopefully you've enjoyed this kind of video. It's a bit different. The idea that I have for it, I don't know if this will materialise in this order, because I still need to get the footage off my dash camera to see if this will all work out correctly. But I'll use that footage alongside some uh, forward camera footage and maybe this as a voiceover or and me speaking but bear in mind if you do see me speaking and you see the footage and you're like going why are you steering the other way it's because it's footage of something else that was a pothole by the way yeah so that's why i've been describing the odd thing that's going on in the background so you're not going what's that <laughs> you know what's going on <laughs> panic <laughs> Yeah, but yet again, I would like to say a massive thank you to everybody who watched watch my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please smash that subscribe button. It, it really does help the channel out. And also hit the like or even the dislike button as well. If you do hit the dislike, please tell me why you dislike it. It would give me good positive feedback in terms of knowing why you didn't like the content or what was wrong. You know, but if you like what you see, please smash that like button. Also, as I said, I'd love to hear your comments on this. I think, you know, it'd be interesting to see different people's perspective on this scenario. How would they approach it? You know, bearing in mind you are in a heavy goods vehicle. And I mean from that perspective, not as if you're a car driver or in a rigid. Because as you may have seen on the footage, that rigids and buses could get through. But I would need the swing on that bend, and I couldn't have the swing without that uh, that truck. I only needed a bit of room, to be honest. But nevertheless, I needed the room that he was in. So <laughs> it was what it was. But as I said, I'd love to hear what your comments are. Or if you have any other comments, any other suggestions, please feel free to comment in the video as well with any ideas that you may have. If you like this content, you know, as well. I am With this kind of content, I don't like to name and shame, personally. I've said this in other videos. I know this is kind of name and shaming to a certain degree, but hopefully if it comes out the way I want to do it, won't necessarily name and shame you know if i can't blur the chat's face out but if he's far enough away that you can't identify him i may not touch him but i'll definitely try and do something over the van's logoing hopefully at the very least you know but either way i'll make sure it's fair so I, at the end of the day i'm not after any hatred to go to his company or anything like that or towards himself 
I know you may deserve it in some ways, but I'm not here to run more of those channels. I want to treat this this bit of footage as a bit of an educational awareness kind of video and just a, a thinking point to go, actually, you know, I may have dealt this situation a bit differently. Or, as I said, maybe you done, would have done something similar I did. You know, have you come across a situation like this before? You know, that might be interesting. It might be cool to hear. So, yet again, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody. I know I've been rattling on the wee bit, but it's a lot better than my other take of this video, I think. So, yet again, a massive thank you from me. And as I said, please smash that subscribe button and that like button. It does help. Check out my Facebook, Instagram. Well, especially Instagram, I'm probably a little bit more active on there, if active on social media. You know, as I like taking pictures and when I see a nice picture opportunity and if I have time I do like to try and take a good pick of the truck here and there and yet again a massive thank you to everybody and I would like to say at the end so I wish I had this in a bit earlier but a massive thank you to uh, I've got his name as well but it's something like trucking photography I'll link it in the description and probably put his name up here somewhere you know, oh, on the display somewhere, because you may not see me do my gesturing. <laughs> so, yet again, thank you very much, and I will see you in the next one. Over and out.